everyone, welcome back to the Block IoT. Today is an exciting day because we've got our hands on a brand new Raspberry Pi 5 8 gigabit version. I've also got an official case for it and we're going to unbox it together and set it up as a powerful IoT server. Please keep in mind, this device is just for prototyping and is not well suited for industrial application. If you are planning to deploy the same system on a real industrial application, I strongly suggest to go with something else such as Siemens IoT 2050 device, which I have talked about before and I put the link somewhere up here. Alright, so as I mentioned, I've got a brand new Raspberry Pi 5 the 8 gigabit RAM version. Uh, there are other versions such as 4 gigabyte of RAM, depends on your needs, so you can select the proper one for your application. I've also got a uh, official case. This is not something fancy, it's just a plastic. I'll open it up and you will see. Most of the time you, uh, you wanna go with something more professional such as a case with an active cooler or maybe aluminum case but for now that's the only thing I could find so I purchased one of these and of course I've got a USB-C 27 watts Raspberry Pi official power supply bear in mind you can power these up with any other USB but totally recommended to go with the original one because it provides the power that your Raspberry Pi needs all right, let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. As you can see, we have the Raspberry Pi 5 itself and it just came with its own box. So just open it up. Just wanna make sure you can see it. So you have to kind of tear down the box and here we go. So nothing else. Thing, there's just some manual. I don't want to go to the details of the Pi itself because there are other existing great videos about Raspberry Pi 5 and explaining what are the features and so on. But overall, if you want to say, the new Raspberry Pi 5 comes with a quad core 64 bit ARM Cortex A76 CPU and has a video core GPU and dual 4K P60 HMI output. And of course it has an onboard SD RAM and so much more. Again, I don't want to go too much into the details of this bag. You can watch other videos or just go to the Raspberry Pi official website to see the specs. This new Raspberry Pi 5 is going to be a powerful device for IoT server project. Again, bear in mind, this is just a prototype, not meant to be used in the industrial application. So I just want to find a SD card show you how to get it started and burn the OS into the SD card and we'll boot up the Raspberry Pi and then we'll install the software and so on. So before doing that, let's just open up the, uh, the case and see what's inside and let's assemble the, the case with the Raspberry Pi and power it up with the official power supply and we'll get into the next steps. All right, so let's just open the box for the case this one is a little different so you don't have to tear it on so you can just simply open the box that's it but the, yeah oh wow that's interesting I didn't know it comes with a fan also I didn't expect that which is very cool and yet there is really no bolts or knots and you can just um, open the box okay let's see what's inside this pocket you also get this uh, small heatsink and also these pads which go under the case uh, and I'll show you when the, it's completely assembled. There are some missing parts as you can see there has to be some uh, port PCB headers or some sort of a screws so we can kind of fix this Raspberry Pi within the box but it's missing and it's not coming with the box uh, which is re not really good let's just put it together and uh, get it started Overall, 
the case looks okay. It's not cheap plastic, I like the quality. And overall, you got four USB ports, Ethernet, and two HDMIs, the power cord, which is USB-C, and also the push button over here. And uh, of course, you have the SD card slot for your OS. Uh, and we'll get one and we'll connect the SD card, and then we'll burn the OS into the SD card and we'll go to the next steps. Alright, so the first thing you want to do, you just want to connect your SD card to a memory card reader and then we'll connect it to our laptop and then we will burn the OS into it. Alright, so if you haven't done it before, the process of burning the OS into the SD card is pretty easy and straightforward. All you need to do is the software called Raspberry Pi Imager and uh, as I showed you, you just need to insert the SD card into the SD card reader and connect it to your laptop. Bear in mind, this is the official OS provided by Raspberry Pi, but there are other options to burn. For example, the Linux Ubuntu is now supporting Raspberry Pi, so you might be able to use that OS instead of the official Raspberry Pi, but I personally prefer the official one because it has been patched properly and it's been maintained by the formal Raspberry Pi organization. All right, so after you open up the software, you just choose your device, which right now, as you can see, we have the Raspberry Pi 5 and we can choose our operating system. Apparently you wanna go with the 64-bit the 32-bit is still supported, but uh, definitely for a Raspberry Pi 5 or a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 GB of RAM, I suggest to go with the 64-bit because it gives you more advantages. So now we just here select the first option and we can select our storage, which right now I've only connected one SD card. Make sure you select the right one if you have more than one. And we'll hit the next. So make sure you apply some settings when you are burning your OS because it makes things easier for you. For example, you can connect your Raspberry Pi directly to your Wi-Fi from here and you can set up the, uh, the system name, enable the SSH and different settings. So let's just do some preliminary settings here. So you want to give it a name and for now I just give it for example Raspberry Pi 5. You want to set up a username by five and give it a password. So I'll configure my wireless LAN. Make sure you select your country, otherwise your Wi-Fi will not work. And after the general setting, you can also go to the services tab. Make sure you enable the SSH. If you would like to control your Raspberry Pi remotely, you will basically access your terminal from another SSH client. Uh, it can be your laptop or workstation. It kind of makes it easier every time you don't have to connect your Raspberry Pi directly. And now we are ready for burning our OS into the SD card. And once it is done, we connect the SD card to a Raspberry Pi and we'll power it up. Now our OS has been written to the SD card and we can remove it and connect it back to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now we have the SD card ready. We just gently insert the SD card into the SD card slot and we'll connect the power. So it seems like once you connect the power, it turns on automatically, which I don't like it personally. I wish it was turned off first and then I had a choice to turn it on. So for now, let's just turn it back off. Okay, now the board is off and we can just turn it on. 
I like the fan is not that noisy compared to the other fans that I had on the previous Raspberry Pi 4 and 3s. All right, so right now our Raspberry Pi has the latest OS install on it. And we just need to do a few general things before installing the IoT stack, which consists of uh, Grafana for visualization, uh, InfluxDB for as a database for storing the data, and you can maybe uh, install Node-RED for programming, but I prefer Python because it's more flexible for me. So one important thing that I noticed on the new Raspberry Pi 5 is you cannot use many VNC viewers to remotely connect your Raspberry Pi because it seems in a new version of the OS there has been some changes or move from X11 to VLAN. You can search what's the difference between X11 and VLAN but there is a discussion going on on Raspberry Pi Forum, you can refer to it. What we really care about right now is you have to know to connect remotely to your Raspberry Pi 5. You can use a VNC viewer such as Tiger VNC which support VLAN, not the other VNC viewer such as Real VNC which only supports X11. That's all we care at the moment. So once you have the Tiger VNC, you can connect to your Raspberry Pi. So when you connect to your Raspberry Pi for the first time, the VNC server is not active by default, so you have to enable it. To do that, just simply connect your Raspberry Pi to a monitor over HDMI, and for sure you need a mouse and keyboard, which are connected to your Raspberry Pi USB port. Once everything is connected, you can go to the Raspberry Pi menu and go to the preference for Raspberry Pi configuration, and under interfaces, you can enable VNC. This enables the VNC server on Raspberry Pi and you can connect to it using Tiger VNC. Now from now on, you, you don't have to connect your Raspberry Pi to a monitor or connect a mouse and keyboard every time you wanna work on it. You can remotely connect to it over VNC connection and that's what I have right now at the moment. The first thing you wanna do, you wanna do a sudo apt-get update. I've already done that so it don't take much time for me, maybe for yourself. It, it's the first time you might get a little more time to update and upgrade the system. And once you've done the update, just do a sudo app get upgrade. Alright, so now we are ready to install the IoT stack and let's see what is the IoT stack. So, as I explained, there are just many applications, software and solution that gives you the capability to implement an IoT project. So what I suggest, I really like this project that is freely available on GitHub, it's called IoT Stack. And make sure you get in the new version, with that's the link. So it's just a few commands, you can install many software as a Docker container on your machine. If you don't know what's Docker, just to simplify it, all you need to care about is Docker capsulated application installed on a machine and it overall makes it easier for you to manage and deal with your application. You can certainly install all this software natively on your OS or Raspberry Pi, but we want to install them on the Docker container because we want to keep them separate from each other, we want to upgrade them whenever we want, or we want to remove them and so on. So here, as I explained, we just want to install a few things. The first one would be InfluxDB. This is a time series database that you can install on Windows, Mac or Linux machine. You can just simply go to the InfluxDB.com and download a copy and install on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, but again, we are not going to use this method, we want to use the Docker version. The second software that we want to use is Grafana. So this is also a software that you can use it for visualizing your data, for building your dashboard and so on. And you can do many other things for it. But of course, it takes more time and effort if you don't want to go with a standardized HMI or SCADA application such as Siemens, WinCC Unified or other applications. This is suitable for more advanced users or maybe for those who know a lot of IT. 
If you are not comfortable with uh, Python or scripting, you can of course use Node-RED, which is a graphical programming language that is just drag and drops. You can uh, build some application, get some information from hardware, do some data processing and send it back to the cloud or any another piece of hardware. So we want to install the, this stack based on the IoT stack that the gentleman put them together. It's very useful. I totally suggest to go for it and it's free of charge. So you can just follow the instruction that is um, available on the website or GitHub. To get it started, we just need to open a new terminal. At first, we need to install the curl. Once the curl is installed, you just need to copy and paste the URL to the repository of the IoT stack and then install it by curl. And just follow the steps after entering the previous command. The first one is just asking, it needs a Python and a virtual environment, you just need to say yes. The next step is installing Docker on your system. Once the installation is complete, you can open up the IoT stack menu and then you can install your favorite or desired software such as Grafana, Mosquito Broker and so on. The first command is to navigate to the IoT stack directory. Once you are in, you can execute the menu. The menu is pretty simple and the first thing you want to do, you just go to build your stack and select the software that you want to install on your machine or Raspberry Pi 5. For now, we will install the Grafana, InfluxDB, Mosquito Broker, we installed Node-RED as well. We already have Python installed natively on our OS, so we don't need to install Python again as a container, but if you like, you can. All you need to do, just press the enter. Now you can just exit this menu and build your stack. So to do so, you just need to enter sudo docker compose op-d. Just wait until the selected softwares are installed as a container. All right, just wait until the process is done and you, and you can see these messages uh, in green, which says creating an InfluxDB done, Grafana done, and so on, and access your containers through the web browser. For example, let's just open Grafana to make sure the installation is complete. So I will just open a browser and type in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi under the port 3000, which is Grafana. Perfect. If you can access this page, congratulations. You have successfully installed the containers and you can start building your project on the Raspberry Pi 5 server using these Docker containers. The default username and password for Grafana is admin admin, all lowercase. At the first login, you will be asked to enter a new password. Now we know that our Grafana is running, let's just check whether our Mosquito Broker is running or not. To test our MQTT Broker, I just use a freely available software called MQTT Explorer, which can be downloaded from the web free of charge. So let's just create a new connection. And let's just give it a name, just hit the connect. And as you can see, our connection to our MQTT broker is also established. Now we get into the fun part and we want to write Python scripts to send some data over MQTT from one node to our server and store that data into the database in FluxDB in our case and then we can visualize the data on Grafana in a few steps. 